Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Tonight, we're talking about bird banding. And we're going to cover kind of why we do it, what we, the information we get from it, and then uh, what to do if you were to find a abandoned bird or to see a abandoned bird, what you can do to report that to help uh, science out. It's, do we call it citizen science? Whenever uh, we can report information like that, and it helps ornithologists all over. Uh, first off, why ban birds? I guess, uh, here's a, a wonderful picture of a special event here in the Kansas City area uh, where uh, the Missouri River Bird Observatory is banding birds at a special event. And the, he is holding a, an indigo bunting in his hand there. And the young man's looking on. Uh, so education is certainly one reason to, to ban birds. Uh, but most of the information that we gather from a bird banding goes to help us understand bird movement, bird uh, longevity, bird uh, DNA. We, we collect samples from them. They are uh, the reason we have modern field guides, the maps that go into field guides, the information that we have uh, reporting there's not a, since the internet, of course, there's a lot more uh, freedom to report bird sightings and and where they are, and then we can track movements. And there's wonderful science citizen science programs like Project Feeder Watch and the Great Backyard Bird Count. All that uh, Christmas bird counts, all that goes into uh, learning more about birds. But bird banding gives us uh, incredible information uh, firsthand. And I'm going to give you some examples of that tonight. Um, the it, But I'll, first thing I want to clear up is that some people believe that uh, bird banding actually harms birds. Well, obviously, people who bird band and they uh, catch birds in nets um, and they they take every precaution they can to make sure that the bird is unharmed when they're, they're taking them out of the nets. I've done it myself many times. Uh, and this is one of the birds you don't want to take out of a net, I can assure you, because cardinals can really take a hunk out of you. They, they have a very strong bite. And whenever I was bird banded in the past, sometimes it's uh, it's like who loses a coin flip, who gets to take the... Uh, the cardinal out of the net versus like the goldfinch. The goldfinch is just lay there. They're they so docile. They just kind of lay in the net. You can easily take them out. The cardinals put up a fight and they bite a lot. But uh, there's a lot of information gathered from them. There's measurements taken there. They, we age them. Uh, obviously, we can sex them. Some birds like chickadees are hard to tell apart and do you measure them. Uh, cardinals are, are, are sexually dimorphic. So that's not as hard. But we uh, we put a band on them that is solely for that bird. And here's a, a great example. I hope you can see in the picture there, uh, the, the band on the chickadee's leg uh, down below the fingers there between the thumb and the fingers. And that bird band has a number on it that is exclusive to that little chickadee. Uh, and then, of course, they it, it, once they've taken all the measurements they do, they weigh them, they judge their, assess their health uh, by the amount of fat on them, things like that. Um, and then they release them from where they caught them. And when you're bird banding, one of the rewards that you get, of course, is that sometimes you catch the bird again. And there are some great stories out there of uh, birds that have been caught. Um, one of the examples that Mary was sharing with me today uh, was about a chickadee that was banded uh, and, and then caught 11 years later. They, net, they had no record of it over 11 years, but then they caught them in the net, caught it in the nets again here in the Kansas City region. Uh, so 11 years apart, which is, you know, you know that bird is at least 11 years old. Uh, there was a story of mine that, that I, when I was bird banding back, um, oh, in the early 90s, we had a, a junco that was caught in the nets uh, here in Kansas City. And it was uh, caught three more times over the next 11 years. And then the bird was found dead uh, at Hill Window, uh, 100 miles north of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So uh, it, we know that bird was making that journey from uh, the, the back same backyard in Kansas City where it had been caught a total of four times uh, over oh, 11 year span. And then nesting somewhere north of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada making that journey every year. So we learn a tremendous amount. We learn migration routes. We learn, you know, nesting areas. We learn all kinds of information from, from them. And it, it's very, very rewarding. So you can't 
obviously read a bird band on the leg of a chickadee. It's your bird feeder. He just, your binoculars not good enough. You can't see the whole band. It's so small. Uh, but there are some circumstances where you can. And I'll show you, this is a really good example of a trumpeter swan that uh, my friend Mary saw out at a, a National Wildlife Refuge here in Missouri a few years ago and found the band, recorded it, uh, uh, contacted uh, the, the people who were doing the study that they were, had been released from. And this was a bird that was actually rescued from a nest that was injured. Uh, it, it, they rescued it and they uh, nursed it back to health and they put the neck band on him and released him. And he showed that was up in Iowa, I'm pretty sure is where uh, that happened. And then this bird uh, was seen at the refuge, I think a couple of times uh, here in Missouri. And it probably wintered down in Oklahoma in that area. Um, but, you know, it's great information. It's, it's great to know that he made it, that, that he survived. And, and, and they, I think you saw him over a couple of years span. So that's really cool. And that's a neck band that you can actually read from a distance. So if you're out and you've got a spotting scope or binoculars and you can read the neck band, get the color. And I'm going to talk about how to report that here in a few minutes. But that gives you great information. You're, you're going to want to they're going to want to know where you saw it, when you saw it. And maybe how long you saw it, uh, and, and that all that information goes into a massive database. So it's very very cool. And then another example um, was this uh, peregrine falcon. Now you you may know, it, you may not know, but the uh, peregrine falcons have now been uh, successfully nesting on large buildings around the United States. Uh, this was a, a reintroduction project that they used. Uh, to uh, find safe places for peregrine falcons to nest because in the wild, when they tried uh, to reintroduce them into a lot of their native habitats, they, they things were getting eaten by great horned owls. That, and they were, so it was very unsuccessful in a lot of places. So they resorted to trying to release them in cities and lo and behold, it has taken hold. This bird was um, on uh, the American Century Building in downtown Kansas City uh, and it was banded. And Mary helped with that project that time. And you can see the color, this blue band on this leg. Well, the cool part of this story was uh, two years after this picture was taken, uh, this picture was taken. And this is the same bird. That is that young peregrine falcon from Kansas City. And this was taken at a bank building outside a window of a bank building in Dallas, Texas. And that bird had uh, showed up at least a couple of years down there on that same bank building and hopefully nested. Uh, they raised young. Here's another picture of them. Uh, you, and if you go back to the, if we go back to the, uh, the baby, you can see that same blue color right there, that blue band on his leg as the blue band that's on the adult bird here. This is the same bird. And they were able to read the, uh, the bands and identify it. So that's, again, that's the type of data that we, we get from bird bands that they really help us out a lot. We know those birds uh, move where they show up and, and hopefully they successfully nest and things like that. So that's another reason why we, we ban birds. Now for you and I, when it comes to seeing uh, or finding a banded bird, the, the the trumpeter swan was an example of one that uh, you know you can see while they're alive. But unfortunately, for most of us, the way we find banded birds is like this: they they strike something, they get killed, and you go pick them up, and lo you know, and behold, you see this little uh, band on their leg, and that is how. Uh, a lot of information is gathered. So what do you do if you find a banded bird? Uh, the Unfortunately, the, you know, like this guy, he, he, you, the old days when I started doing, when I was doing this, you know, back in the 90s, there you would take the little band off the leg. You would tape it to a little uh, a piece of uh, business card or something, stick it in an envelope and mail it to Bird Band USA or at, at the, They've updated. Obviously, the internet has made that uh, obsolete. You don't have to do that anymore. There is a 1-800 number that you can call and report the band, and you tell them what kind of bird it was. And if you can't identify the type of bird, uh, they will communicate with you and help you identify it. Of course, the internet is a, a great way to do this. You take a picture of it. Um, I'll put the link in the description, but it's uh, www.reportband.gov. And it's pretty simple. You go there and you fill out a form and you tell them where you found it. 
And if I think there's a place to attach a picture so you can have it positively identified. And then it, if you got the 1-800 number, I'll put that in there as well. But when you do send that report of that banded bird in, one of the things you that you'll get, which is really cool, is you will get a, a certificate uh, and the, the person who found the bird gets a certificate and the person who bans the bird gets the certificate. So they know when one of their birds they have banned it for, if it was a scientific study, if it was at a nature center, a bird banding, uh, uh, you know, uh, show that uh, they put on, or if it was part of a scientific study uh, that is going on in a certain area, well, that person gets that the, the information and you get the information and it lets you know what they know about that bird. You know, they know the sex, they know uh, when it hatched, they know it, it, whatever information they have on that bird, they will get it to you. And that's really cool. That, you know, that's a kind of a reward for you taking the time to report these banded birds. And I'm telling you, we would not have modern field guides if it weren't for bird banding. Uh, we have learned so much. And again, the genetic work they're able to do from blood samples and things like that, from DNA, from these, these birds that they find, um, it, 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 it helps science forward and it helps us as as bird watchers and, and, and biologists that, that you know, to learn so much more than we, we would without the data. So uh, bird banding is a very, very important thing. Uh, it, it really helps us to learn. And I'll put the links in below. So if you ever do find a bird, uh, that one that you may see somewhere that you can read the man, uh, we can get that information out there. If you find one that is dead, maybe hit struck a window and lay there, you can get the information off that man and report it uh, via the methods down in the link below. So you can help scientists out. It is invaluable information. So it's a great idea for a program. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, send in ideas for programs you want us to talk about. Give us a like, give us a share, and please subscribe. Till then, come on, let's talk birds.